Rob, take it away, sir. Great. And good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. I am Rob Hale, founder and COO of Travel and Relax. And tonight, I am honored to be joined with our company CEO and tonight's moderator, Maurice Washington, my wife, Lisa, who serves as our director of celebrations, and an amazing behind the scenes staff from Max Ratkai and James Pomodi and Heather, who help us in our ongoing efforts to always provide top level customer service to our guests. Travel and Relax was founded 16 years ago on August 1st, 2004, with the mission to unify the world one traveler at a time. These tours began in June of 2020 as COVID-19 challenged our world and dramatically changed how people travel. As Travel and Relax considered how we could help you escape the stresses of today's world, we felt that offering you virtual tours around the world to some of the world's great destinations would provide you with a great escape from the stresses of COVID, all from the comfort of your own environment. Our major tours are being held bi-monthly with the regional tours being held every other month. All of our tours allow you to dream of future travel experiences you might enjoy. Tonight, we are very pleased to offer you an exciting tour of Puerto Rico, which will be presented to us by our friend Francisco Blanche, Leisure Sales Director for Discover Puerto Rico. Before he begins, while we do wanna hear from you, to prevent from the distractions of background noise, all attendees will be muted. There will be a question and answer period at the end. And if you have questions, please Hello. enter it in the chat box or raise your hand in the participants box. Our moderator will make sure that your questions get asked. And now I'm excited and pleased to introduce you to Francisco. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Lisa and Maurice, for this great opportunity. Good evening, everyone. A warm and virtual welcome to Puerto Rico. As we begin, I'd like to begin by telling you about today's um, virtual visit. We are going to cover entry protocols, the island and its regions, properties that stand out, outdoor activities, and the unique aspects that make Puerto Rico a great destination. Just like all islands nowadays, we have several protocols that we need to comply with, and we have very good news. The last executive order has eased restrictions considerably as of May 28th. Getting vaccinated makes a world of difference when it comes to the freedom of travel. All hotels are open with distancing measures and face coverings mandatory in public areas. Pools and restaurants are open at 50% capacity public beaches and natural reserves are open, and all tours are operating at 50% capacity. And we strongly suggest to make reservations. People who are fully vaccinated do not need to take the PCR test. Still, when planning a trip to Puerto Rico, travelers are required to fill out a travel declaration form through the Puerto Rico Health Department's online portal. If not vaccinated, then must get a molecular COVID-19 test, which is the nasal or throat swab, no more than 72 hours prior to visiting the island, and show proof of a negative result. Children between the age of two and the accepted age to be vaccinated do need the PCR test. Let's begin by locating Puerto Rico. The smallest of the Greater Antilles is located west of Hispaniola, east of the US Virgin Islands and the British Virgin Islands and due north of South America. Today, Puerto Rico is a hub to connect to all the islands to the east with several commuter airlines which operate flights to the Lesser Antilles. Many people are still asking about what happened in Puerto Rico, how is Puerto Rico faring out after the storms? Well, it's been more than three years since both storms hit Puerto Rico and the USVI. And we've had major infrastructure improvements after the storms in September of 2017. Billions have been invested. Government funds were put in to respond and to recover and to restore the islands, different infrastructure such as the power grid, communications, roadways, and bridges. Also, the hotels have invested millions in renovations and improvements. Puerto Rico is practically a completely renovated island. Now, 
Puerto Rico is very different from a typical Caribbean travel experience for a very simple reason. Puerto Rico is a US territory. It only takes a domestic flight with all the conveniences of home while still getting that feeling that you have traveled to another country. And I must remind everyone that there is no need to retest to come back to stateside. There are legacy and low cost as well as hybrid concept airlines coming to San Juan, Ponce and Aguadilla. Yes, we have three airports serving all regions of Puerto Rico. The flight times are relatively short for the most part. The majority of gateways are about two to five hours from many of the three main airports. There are many new things in Puerto Rico. Very quickly, I'll tell you the Intercontinental is now a Royal Sonesta. We have a great entertainment concept called El Distrito, which is already open. The Hotel Serafina is now named Condado Beach, Condado Ocean Club. The Hyatt Grand Reserve will be opening a water park. The Fairmont El San Juan has joined the Virtuoso family. There is a second aloft that just opened in Ponce. There is a new boutique hotel in Old San Juan called Palacio Provincial. Um, and there are two breaking projects, Almost Homes, which will feature 27 apartments and a 50 room boutique trip by Wyndham. They both break ground on the fall. Now from picture perfect beaches and one of a kind hikes in the only tropical forest in the US forest system, which is El Yunque. Puerto Rico is filled with a wide variety of incredible outdoor experiences that allow visitors to enjoy the natural beauty of the island. Puerto Rico's mountain towns like Calle, Orocovis, Hayuya, offer gorgeous hikes with amazing views. Toro Verde Nature Adventure Park in Orocovis offer trails and zip lining. There is camping, breathtaking caves, canyons, rivers, and small island. Horseback riding in the forest and in beautiful beaches. And you can practice any imaginable water sport in more than 300 beaches. Or you can actually go bird watching and get to see the Puerto Rican parrot, an endemic species that came to the brink of extinction, but was saved and recovered. 300 bird species, 17 of them endemic, converge in the different areas of Puerto Rico as they migrate south. They can be seen in the Cabo Rojo Natural Wildlife Reserve in the southwestern tip of the island. We have 18 golf courses, wonderful courses bordering stunning beaches and cliffs with lush mountain views, many of them championship, designed by famous golfers. TPC Dorado Beach East and St. Regis by Robert Trent Jones Sr. He created four classic seaside courses that maintain a modern championship layout, yet still fun for players of all skill levels. The links at Royal Isabella extend dramatically along cliffs 200 feet above the ocean and drop to areas of natural sand dunes along the Atlantic. Immaculate course conditions, luxury club atmosphere, and a tropical setting combine for a world-class golf experience. Puerto Rico is a great destination for family travel. We offer great options for all ages. We have parks, we have museums, we have attractions, we have history. And it's the weddings and honeymoon Caribbean destination you all have been searching for. Puerto Rico is a friendly LGBTQ Caribbean destination. San Juan's scene has earned a reputation for being fun and accepting, a perfect stop for first time visitors. And there is growing buzz for Vieques, Cabo Rojo and other regions. The island of Puerto Rico is rich in festivals, traditions, art and music. Beyond the popular salsa and the ballads of the famous Puerto Rican singers, there is a folklore that is specific to each town attached to religious beliefs that converge from colonial days to date. Music like bomba and plena are a perfect example. Our Mardi Gras we call Carnaval, and there are festivals in each town that last at least three days, celebrated in honor of the town's patron saint. And the best known is the San Sebastian Street Celebration, which takes place mid-January in Old San Juan. It closes our holiday season, which begins in Thanksgiving, the longest holiday season in the world. Now, well before Europeans arrived, pre-Taino people inhabited the island. There are burial sites, petroglyphs, and artifacts carbon dated as back as 400 AD. It is believed that some of these cultures were Mesoamerican, as they also practiced ball games in specially designed courts, seven of which are seen in the ceremonial center in Ponce. Also similar to those civilizations, 
the large square in its center, framed by paved streets with flat slabs. We use today both English and Spanish words that come from the Taino, like hammock, hamaca, or barbecue, barbacoa. The Taino celebrated their ceremonies dancing and singing. They were gatherers, fishermen, and hunters, but they also had knowledge in farming and had an elaborate process to prepare their bread, cassabe, which is Taino for cassava. Now the culinary scene is exploding and mixology has become a true art form. With endless evolution and constant transformation incorporating influences and traditions, the Puerto Rican kitchen has evolved into a foodie's paradise over the years, combining traditional and trendy flavors, merging international and local cuisine, reinventing grandma's recipes, the island chefs aim to captivate visitors' palates. More than 4,000 restaurants and internationally recognized James Beer Award-winning chefs are plating new takes on traditional island fare. The island is experiencing an agricultural revival, powered in great part by, by the culinary industry. The farms and the coffee plantations are now becoming bed and breakfasts and glamping experiences, while restaurants and bars are featuring locally sourced ingredients, and chefs are encouraging locals and travelers to savor the island's amazing native-inspired dishes. We are known for a delicious culinary offering and with a very good reason. We have an emerging group of award-winning local chefs that have opened restaurants and are elevating the island's products and flavors with specialized techniques, making Puerto Rico's culinary scene worth a visit. Here's a showcase list of unique restaurants and chefs, among them Santa Ella, Juan Jose Cuevas, Mario Pagan, Gabriel Hernandez, and they all have great dishes to offer. We have culinary adventures like the Pork Highway, just a stretch of road in the mountain town of Calle. It's lined by dozens of lechoneras, which are open air restaurants specializing in slow roasting pork. And we have the route of the Longaniza. The Longaniza is a type of intensely flavorful, slightly spicy sausage made of pork or chicken or both, which is a specialty of the town of Orocovis. And we have the Luquillo kiosks, which is a strip of road where about 60 beachfront restaurants, ranging from open air dive bars to sit down places, serve traditional Puerto Rican food and other specialties. And Piñones, the coastal part of the town of Luisa, composed of dozens of kiosks selling fritters, skewered meat and fresh fruit shakes. La Placita in Santurce, can you imagine a food court that wasn't planned and is not made of known brands of fast food? La Placita is a culinary cultural evolution where great restaurants started popping around the central market and people started sharing at the market's entrance, having drinks and a laugh while deciding which restaurant to go or waiting for their table to be called. Now, a great way to see Puerto Rico is by car. In this map, we can appreciate the reach that our network of highways and roads provides to all confines of the island and the many points of interest as well as paradores, small inns, and boutique hotels all around Puerto Rico. All hotel chains and their brands are present, as well as some of the most attractive independent hotels, small inns, and vacation rentals. More than 300 hotels can be booked in GDS, and local concepts such as our paradores, tended by Puerto Rican families, the best way of feeling our hospitality and getting to know the local way of life. Roughly 100 miles long by 30 miles wide, the north is bordered by the Atlantic Ocean and the south by the Caribbean Sea. The central mountain range runs along the middle of the island and drives all the weather patterns being a natural rainforest, birthing more than 43 rivers. 300 miles of coastline and a few more islands because Puerto Rico is actually a small archipelago. Vieques and Culebra are unique in their beach offerings and Mona Island to the west is our Galapagos with endemic species only found there and a unique cave system. Ecologically protected, no hotels are found in Mona and a special permit is required to visit. In 1493, during his second voyage, Christopher Columbus landed in what the Taino people called Borican, land of the brave. He named the whole island in honor of St. John the Baptist. San Juan Bautista. 
But it was not until 1508 that the Spanish government appointed Juan Ponce de Leon as the first governor of San Juan. And he founded the original settlement in Caparra, which is now known as Old Town. But the air wasn't wholesome and the mendicant friars insisted on moving the settlement closer to the sea. They preferred the area that was that of the islet of Puerto Rico because of its similar geographical features to the island of Gran Canaria in the Canary Islands. They finally had their wish and by 1521, the move was complete and it was known as the Villa of Puerto Rico. Over time, the name of the island San Juan became the name of the city and the name of the city Puerto Rico became the name of the island. And in this picture, you can see that island. Now more modern to the far end is where old San Juan is. And then to the near end is where the Bay of Condado begins. There are several, as you can see, uh, historic places. I like telling the story of Ponce de Leon returning to Southwest Florida with the first large scale attempt to establish a Spanish colony in 1521. However, the, nati the native Calusa people fiercely resisted that incursion and he was seriously wounded. The colonization attempt was abandoned as Ponce de Leon was rushed to Cuba, which was the nearest island, where he died from his wounds soon after. Then his remains were taken to Puerto Rico and they rest inside the cathedral of San Juan Bautista, you know, San Juan. Now, Florida had to wait 44 more years when in 1565, St. Augustine was founded by Spanish Admiral Pedro Menendez, who was Florida's first governor. And as a reference uh, time, we know the pilgrims arrived 55 years later in November of 1620 to Plymouth. This map shows the key locations of the urban San Juan and old San Juan. You can find this map in our website, www.discoverpuertorico.com. At the other end of the island of San Juan, this is the Fort of San Geronimo, guarding the entrance of the bay that we saw in the other picture, that's the Bay of Condado. So what we see here is on the other side, the neighborhoods of Condado on the shore, Miramar behind the lagoon, and far in the horizon, Isla Verde, which is where the international airport is. The East region is known for nature, beaches, golf, and great resorts, and two bioluminescent bays and the islands of Vieques and Culebra. The region is comprised of 15 towns, two small islands, and a legendary rainforest, which I mentioned before. Great beaches, rivers, quaint food stands, horseback riding, ATV experiences. There is so much to enjoy here. Home to El Yunque, which is the only subtropical rainforest in the United States forest system with waterfalls, hiking trails, and panoramic vistas that are nature lovers wonderland. Visitors can enjoy a variety of activities changing from a leisurely hike to extreme canyoneering. The waters of the east coast of Puerto Rico are teeming with marine life, making them ideal for snorkeling and diving adventures, fishing, boat charters of all kinds, or simply swimming, relaxing, and enjoying the beach. And then Vieques and Culebra are two amazing islands on the eastern side. Culebra is made of 23 small islands and keys and is home to Flamenco Beach, considered the most beautiful in the world by Condé Nast. Vieques is an island of unique beauty with one of the very few black sand beaches in the Caribbean. The brightest bioluminescent lagoon, which is Mosquito Bay, one of the three that are in Puerto Rico and seven in the world. With their breathtaking beaches, Culebra and Vieques are excellent destinations for work activities as well. And there are several hotels and small inns where to spend a few days. Now the Southern region is comprised of about 11 towns that offer visitors a contrast with the Northern side. There is history, there is agriculture, there is remote beaches which are nestled off to the calm waters of the Caribbean. There are marinas for boating excursions, wildlife refuges, and there is a lot more. Now you can plan a trip like you would at home, get into your favorite mapping tool, plot your course, see how clear and detailed it shows with alternate routes to choose from. We have an excellent highway system, I mean it. Take a look, a couple of these images where you can see and have assurance you will be traveling in first world highways on our way to Ponce, traveling alongside nature and crossing over the central mountain range. The views are spectacular. And we have every option for car rental available, including local companies which offer competitive rates 
and there is no need for international driver's license. Now on a clear sunny day, we feast our eyes with all the varying tones of green these mountains have to offer. This is Highway 52 or Expresso Luis Ferre, and you can see it's a modern highway which takes you from north to south. Now, what is more beautiful about these mountains, which this picture doesn't do justice, is the green tones that you can perceive because the human eye can perceive up to 11 tones of green um, you will be able to enjoy crossing over. And then one notable for its history and its cultural riches. In Ponce, you can visit several museums, um, impressive European art collections, among other bright and colorful homes that have become museums as well. There are European accents of the 19th century that can be appreciated in the landmarks, such as the Serrayes Mansion and the Parque de Bombas, which is that bright red and black striped structure that we saw before. And we see it here, top right, showing our most recent group of advisors greeted by a typical plena group, modern and contemporary, historic and iconic, archeologic and architectural. Who would have said there was so much to see and learn in the middle of the Caribbean? The West is world renowned for surfing and sunsets. The feel of the West Side is different from the hustle and bustle of the San Juan metropolitan area. The towns here have a more laid back surfer vibe, which isn't a coincidence since surfers flock to Rincon from all over to ride the waves at iconic beaches like Maria's Beach and Dome's Beach. Beginners who want to learn can find lessons in Isabel, Aguadilla, or Rincon. And more experienced riders can find board rentals and local advice from area surf shops. Some of the best sunsets in the island can be seen on this region. And there are other attractions like the third bioluminescent bay at the fishing town of La Parguera, or the Cabo Rojo National Wildlife Reserve and the salt flats. Away from the coast are the central mountains featuring diverse vegetation, very fertile grounds. Most of the island's coffee is grown in these hills and you can taste it at several haciendas. The region runs east to west through 15 municipalities with a history and culture rooted in agriculture. This region's scenery varies from mountains to caves, plains, canyons, rivers. Orocovis, one of the biggest towns in the central area of Puerto Rico, is home to the Toro Verde Nature Adventure Park, which features two of the longest zip lines in the world. And then we go north where caves, rivers, and beautiful beaches are found. There are nine towns in the North region. And this region is also known as the Northern Karst because of its large limestone hills. You will often notice white stone peaks poking through the green forest. The diversity of the Karst belt and its landscape makes this setting unique in the world. And many Northern beaches are known for their impressive rock formations. Also, cave networks and underground rivers with a wide array of experiences and opportunities to enjoy the natural beauty of this region. The Camuy River Cave Park is a cave system in Puerto Rico, which is located in this region. And it's a network of caverns, part of a system of natural limestone caves and underground waterways carved out by the third largest underground river in the world the Kamui River. It was discovered in 1958 and the first documented in 1973 book, Discovery at the Rio Kamui. There is an archeological evidence that these caves were explored hundreds of years ago by the Taino people. Only a fraction of the system has been explored and a small part of the complex is open to the public. There is a 268 acre park that features tours and some of the caves and sinkholes and is one of the most popular natural attractions in Puerto Rico. Within the past few years, many coffee haciendas have opened up to the public, offering tours of the farm, taking visitors through the production processes from seed to cup. Many also have very good restaurants and shops within, and some will even include bed and breakfasts for an overnight stay. Now, Puerto Rico is the rum capital of the world. During your visit to the island, you and your clients will have an opportunity to try it at the source, visit the cellars, take a mixology lesson, and learn more about this spirit, one of the most important drivers of the Caribbean economies. 
70% of the rum we consume in the United States comes from Puerto Rico. Now, that takes us to Puerto Rico's national drink. Everybody enjoys a cold and refreshing piña colada served here as originally created. We have three runner-ups to the authorship of the piña colada. Roberto Cofresi, who isn't claiming any authorship, he was a local parrot who rewarded his sailors with a drink and a coconut, adding pineapple juice and rum to the coconut water. Then we have two gentlemen, both by the name of Ramon, who claimed being the creators of the drink. Ramon Marrero at the Hilton and Ramon Portas at a restaurant in Old San Juan called Barrachina. That restaurant is still open and it has a plaque to commemorate the location where they claim the piña colada was invented. But here's how the story goes. In 1954, there was a shortage of coconuts in Puerto Rico due to a strike in the coconut plantations. At the time they served that drink, which still wasn't a piña colada, but had pineapple juice in a coconut. So Monchito Marrero at the Hilton had to resort to Halloween pineapples to serve the drink. But for the cocktail to hold cold, he decided to make some changes. He added ice, coconut cream, coconut milk, and instead of mixing the ingredients, he blended them in, in a blender, making it a frozen drink. Then he served it on a pineapple and garnished it, and it became the cocktail that we know today. The governor at the time officialized it by a decree in 1978, granting credit to Monchito Marrero as the creator of the piña colada. Now go ahead, take a screenshot. Perhaps instead of a glass of wine over dinner, next time you will have a piña colada. The Discover Puerto Rico website is loaded with images and videos and presented in a highly engaging editorial style. Enjoy a best-in-class portal to help you explore all that the destination has to offer in a fun, engaging, and easy to navigate online experience. For travel agents, you can become an expert travel agent. And there is so much to do and see, but let's recap some of the must-do or bucket list activities you don't wanna miss. The natural wonders that I've been talking about all around the island whether it's a cave, whether it's a yunque, whether it's the bioluminous and lagoons. You can schedule a food tour and taste the island's cuisine. You can kayak in the different rivers and lagoons, uh, go caving. You can go body rafting as well. Um, take a tour of, of the enchanting city of Ponce. Take a tour of the old San Juan. 1521, 2021, we are celebrating 500 years of old San Juan. Enjoy coffee tasting or agro-tourism or a glamping experience at El Pretexto in our mountains. Or simply go on a, to the beaches, go to the restaurants, you know, enjoy the island. We are open arms, ready to welcome you all. I wanna thank you for the opportunity to have us present to you tonight. And now I leave you with our host, Thank you very much, Francisco. Appreciate everything that you're doing and everything that you presented this evening. Um, I'm curious to know what is the weather year round? How does that how does that work out? Is there a lot of humidity? What what is a person to expect? The weather is actually um, warm. Um, it's a tropical island. The uh, it, it gets a little warmer on on the summer months. Uh, and then it starts to, you know, be more, more dry actually is, is the right word um, as we approach, you know, fall and winter. But it's a, it's a tropical uh, island, so it's, a, it's an eternal spring summer. Got it. Okay. We have a um, question here from Lisa. Uh, do they have uh, Uber and a Lyft in Puerto Rico? Yes, there is Uber, there is taxis, um, there is plenty of, of car rental options. So yeah, there is, there is a lot of transportation available. Okay, great. Um, let's see here. Uh, what is the best way to visit El? I don't know, I don't wanna tear it up, so. Oh, you <laughs> um, mean. Okay, um, if, you don't, <laughs> if you don't have a car. 
Well, if you if you don't have a car, again, I mean, you can take you, there is Uber, there is there is Lyft, there is taxis. Um, there, there, it's easy to to move around. Very easy. Okay. Yeah. So you have brought up something in the middle regarding the recovery of Puerto Rico, and I know there's been a ton of news since that moment. Um, but you guys have been you guys have recovered very well since that time. If if you went to to Puerto Rico, you you couldn't find, you know, unless you, you went, you know, I, I don't know where, honestly, to find any any vestige of the damages. Uh, like I said, it's been more than three years. This happened in September of 2017. We are in, in June of 2021. And I know there are TV programs still out there showing that, but that is just a way for them to, uh, you know, to do business, uh, Puerto Rico is in, in perfect shape and and is you know very very easy to move about and enjoy. That's amazing. I'm glad that you guys are re- you guys are recovered. Um, and we have another question from Vicky Nelson. Are there many tours you can uh, sign up for? Absolutely, and they they can go to you and and book them all with you. Um, there, like I said in the last. Uh, in the last few slides, and I'll go back to it um, right here. You can you can do ecotourism in Puerto Rico. You can uh, charter a, a catamaran or or buy into a, a group, uh, go sailing or fishing, uh, kayaking. You can you know take a, a tour, a gastronomy tour of Old San Juan or, or even Ponce as well. Um, I mean, it, it, the, 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 the potential is endless, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's what it looks like here. And there's some great questions coming in. Thank you guys for participating. Um, we have one from Carol Z. Um, what would be the average amount of time for a trip to Puerto Rico? I would say no less than four days. Ideally, seven days. Got it. So with that being said, Rob had asked a question, similar, a similar question. Uh, do you recommend a broad tour of the island or to focus on a specific destination? My, my best recommendation is to you know, plan to do the island around the, you know, the take the highways, uh, it's excellent highways like you would find at home and, uh, and drive around. Uh, you're gonna find, a lot along the way that is going to catch your eye and you're going to stop and explore. Uh, the small towns are, are very quaint. Um, the, there's more than 4,000 restaurants. That's why we don't have all-inclusives in Puerto Rico because you don't have to be confined to a resort all the time. Um, and food is not expensive. Uh, so you will find, you know, you could go to one of the greatest chefs that I mentioned before and you know have a great dinner but you can also go to the kiosks and try all of our fritters and you know try the lechon and try the mofongo and try the arañitas and and the amarillo i mean it's it's incredible i mean we use plantain uh for almost every recipe there is more than 248 recipes with plantains and we even put plantains in in our sushi that's that's (laughs) How, how rich our culinary can get. <laughs> that sounds amazing, man. Amazing. Uh, we have a question from Carol. Do you recommend a family trip of three generations and what families like, like best in Puerto Rico? Actually, there is, there is a lot of, uh, of families and, and multi-generational as well. Um, and I, I think that maybe they would like to do a combination of the resort areas to the east or the west and, and San Juan, because the younger, depending on, on the age, right, but the, if they are in, in the 18 to 30 bracket, they probably are looking for more action. Uh, by the way, drinking age legally in Puerto Rico is 18, it's not 21. Uh, I'm not enticing anyone to drink, but responsibly is uh, very enjoyable. Um, you can go to uh, 
a great family experience would be going to the Bacardi distillery or the Ronde del Barrilito distillery and take a mixology lesson, learn how to make a piña colada, learn how to make a mojito, um, play golf, um, uh, enjoy a trip to, to the islands of either Vieques or Culebra, go snorkeling. Um, it is, it is a, a great thing. I mean, you know, the, the older generation may be golfing while the wives may be in the spa, while the children may be playing tennis. Um, we have it all. That's what it looks like. And we have actually another great question from uh, Crystal Foster here. How long would it take to drive the whole island and make, um, and how many square miles is it? So the island is 100 miles long by 30, 35 miles wide. Um, to, you could drive the whole highway around in one day, but that's all you would do. You would not stop anywhere other than to refuel. Um, if you take you know, the, the pace to visit the, uh, the important places that I have been mentioning and include uh, visiting Ponce, doing a full visit of old San Juan, uh, exploring some of those beaches, uh, trying to see the, the caves, um, going to, to some of the museums as well. It's like I said before, it's a, it's a four to seven day type of, of uh, itinerary that will be very rich and very um, enjoyable. And actually it's something that you will not forget. All right, all right. Um, we also have another question from, or from uh, Vicky Nelson. Uh, do, most, do most of the people speak English? Absolutely. Puerto Rico is, has been a U.S. territory for the last 120 years, and uh, both languages are official, English and Spanish. So everybody speaks English, yeah. Gotcha. Now let me ask you this, because this is the elephant in the room for those newlyweds, those uh, you know, aspiring to become married, are they, and then looking for a destination. Would this be a fantastic place to get married in? I would say it is. I mean, it's been uh, a, a wedding and honeymoon destination forever. You know, there are, I'm not going to sing them now, but there are several songs, some dating back to many, many years. I'm going to say how many that sing to honeymooning and weddings in Puerto Rico. Uh, it's a very active um, industry, the wedding industry in, in Puerto Rico. In Yuha, I mean, if you're looking for an unforgettable wedding and an unforgettable venue, I can tell you, it's, it's, it's good. you're going to have a hard time choosing. Yeah, I can believe that. I can believe that. Now, um, it's another question here. Do you um, you find that Puerto Rico has is more suited for families or couples? Or, you know, what do you see, or is there a good mixture for everybody to really, you know, jump into? It's not really age specific. I would say it's not age specific. If, um, you know, the more senior uh, travelers will find the activities that suit them with the resorts that are more to their liking, uh, you can find that relaxing uh, environment for the younger generations. If you're looking for thrills, if you're looking for an adrenaline rush, uh, you can ride uh, the monster or the beast uh, zip lines at the Toro Verde Adventure Park. They're 1.4 and, and one mile long. So they're the longest zip lines in the Western hemisphere. Um, you can do uh, rock climbing, um, you can do surfing, uh, the children, I mean, Puerto Rico is a place where a lot of people live and they have children. So why wouldn't there be things for the children to do? We have children museums. We have places which specialize in children activities. Um, and when, when children travel, they also want to see new things and, and learn about things that they don't have at home. So the island is, is, a, is, a, is, is a great attraction in itself and it fits every every budget and it fits every like for every age that's awesome so now i know there's classes that you can learn how to make a pina, pina colada what about um are there any cooking classes are those offered 
Yes, there are. There are. We, we have several companies that specialize in gastronomy tours and cooking lessons. And a lot of people come for that or add that to the things that they want to do while they're visiting Puerto Rico. That's great. Um, we have one more question here, and it's from Rob. Are there any special licenses or requirements to get married in Puerto Rico? Actually, it's just the same as getting married at home, because okay. again, Puerto Rico is a, is a U.S. territory. Just make sure you bring all your paperwork with you. That's all. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's very good. Well, it looks like um, we don't have any more questions, and it seems like you have wrapped up with everything that you have. We want to send a special thank you for you taking your time this evening to give us this tour. Um, you're, you're a wonderful guy. And I'm just, uh, these are the type of people that we're aligned with here at uh, Travel and Relax. So, you know, as you can tell, Francisco is very easy to talk to. We'll set you up with him and he'll take care of you. So um, again, thank you so much for taking the time, Francisco. Thank you, Maurice. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Lisa and team. It's a pleasure to see you again. And I look forward to the next time. And before we sign off, let's hear from Rob real quick. Great. And, then we'll and I there. also want to thank you, Francisco, for the excellent presentation. Uh, very solid information, helpful information uh, for our guests here tonight. And appreciate your taking time out of your schedule to present for us. Our next tour will be July 7th. Uh, when we will present you an exciting regional tour to Alaska. And registration is currently up on our events page at travelandrelax.com. We also invite you to check out our event page archives on our website, where you, can refine, where you can find replays of past tour destinations we have presented. And we will be posting uh, this video up as well onto the archives, as well as on our company Facebook page and other sites if you wish to review it. Uh, should you have follow-up questions on travel to Puerto Rico or have other travel-related questions that we can assist you with, or if we can service your travel needs in any way to after tonight, please do let us know and we'd be happy to assist you. And I want to thank all of you, our guests, for taking time out of your evenings and schedules uh, to join us tonight. And we very much appreciate your being here. Thank you for attending. Thank you.